Hi guys, how are you? I'm totally excited today to have Dr. Gretchen with us today on our show. Well, I'm going to meet her and invite her to the show after full one year. Oh my God, one year is a long time. And finally, she'll be here with us once again. Well, without wasting much time, I'm going to add her quickly here. And uh, I love her. I know you guys know her already about her so I'm giving much of an intro, girl. Invite her here with us. Hi, all. And thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to... Hi! Hello! <laughs> I'm just super excited to see you. I'm excited to see you. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I can see, you know, in last one year, you have done so much work with the missing, a missing link. Oh my God, that's going fabulous. Yeah, it's crazy. It, everything started with just the missing link as a way to help people around the world. And then with everything else that's been going on, there's telehealth, physical therapy, a core program. There's just, there's a lot You're going on. You're just going superb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations for Thank all the success. You. Thank you. It's been fun. I have to say, you know, I was, of course, excited to meet you once again. More than me, there were a few people in the group and they were like, yes, we want to meet Dr. Gretchen. <laughs> <laughs> so great. They have been asking me to invite you once again here. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I love doing these. It's such a cool way to just talk to a bunch of people all at once that you wouldn't otherwise be able to talk to. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, helping everybody worldwide. So yes. it's a very good medium. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much once again for being here. It's okay. always a pleasure to see you here with us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. So, Doctor, uh, moving on to the MS and, and the exercises part, the first thing, you know, I want to talk to you about today is the fatigue part. So, since it's lockdown, everybody at home, you know, is getting frustrated and depressed and irritated, the fatigue level, I guess, is just increasing day by day because yeah. of not exercising or just getting frustrated inside. So what do you think, what kind of fatigues are there in MS and uh, how to deal with them? Yeah, so there's two different types of fatigue with MS. And I think it's really important to understand which type you are dealing with because it's, it's treated differently. So the first type is primary fatigue. And this is the type of fatigue where you didn't do anything to cause it. It's purely caused from MS, not from anything else. You got a good night's sleep. Right. You did not... Go, you weren't out and about all day. You, there, you didn't do anything to cause yourself to be fatigued. And then the second type is secondary fatigue. And this means that you did something that caused this fatigue to come on. Maybe you did exercise or you were out and about all night or a day. You're stressed. There's something that you did or something that's happening that's causing you to be tired. That's secondary fatigue. And exercise actually shows, or research shows, that exercise is beneficial for both types of fatigue, which I always like to point out because a lot of people, understandably so, will say, how can I exercise? I'm so tired. But there are always exercises you can do, if, even if you break it down and it's a really simple exercise, some exercise, any exercise, can actually help with fatigue. And I think it's also important to remember that you don't have to exercise all at once. Research mm -hmm. used to show that exercising all at once was the most effective way to exercise. But now it's actually showing that you can exercise throughout the day and it is just as effective. So if you can exercise for five minutes before being fatigued, stop, after, stop at five minutes. And then maybe at lunchtime, you can do five more minutes and then maybe okay. 3 p.m. So you, there, there are strategies you can implement to still exercise with fatigue and research shows that fatigue should lessen when you exercise consistently. Oh, is it? Okay. The mm -hmm. other question, you know, I keep getting is, you know, okay, they understand that you have to exercise during fatigue, but how much is the thing, you know? How can one understand how much is the limit of exercising? So this is a really hard question because some people, I'll go with the easier answer first. Some people feel fatigued while they're exercising. So let's say um, you're exercising and you feel like, oh man, I just got to sit back. This is a lot. Then you went too far. Stop right before that point. The first moment that you feel, okay, I'm feeling this. Come on, stop and rest. 
wait for that feeling to go away, and then continue. But the trickier part is when people don't feel that in the moment. So some people, they can exercise for five hours if they want. They wouldn't feel it at all, but the next day they would feel it. So yes. the best thing to do if you're that type of person is, it. let's say you exercise for an hour and the next day you are down and out. You can't do a single thing because you're just so fatigued or limited because of the exercise you did. The next time you exercise, stop yourself at 45 minutes and see how that, how do you feel the next day? If that was still too much, the next time you exercise, stop yourself at 30 minutes, even though you feel fine. That's the hardest part. You're gonna feel fine. You're going to feel like you can do more, but don't yeah. and see how that goes for you the next day. Yes, yeah, so there are so many people who, you know, they uh, you know keep on increasing their level of exercising and walking each day. They mm -hmm. feel that they are completely fine, but they really do not know what's actually happening inside their body. Right. So, which, of course, results in other difficult or more problems. Um, so if I talk about this, uh, you know, intensity of exercising, especially during the heat, since it's summertime, and people also have problem of heat intolerance, you know. So how much, how can they manage with the heat problem and the exercising they are doing? Is it by reducing the minutes of exercising they are doing or, um, you know, maybe wearing something like... Uh, right. Um, it can be both. And again, I feel like with every answer, I can probably say it's different for everyone. But for some people, if you know that you have heat intolerance, like you're just aware that that is one of your symptoms because one or many symptoms worsen when you're warm or when it's hot outside, then I would suggest anytime you exercise, be proactive and wear some type of cooling device, whether it's a vest, right. a scarf, a hat, and this isn't water, but you know, have, a, have ice cold drink next to you the entire time so that you okay. can sit throughout it. However, if you're not really sure, if sometimes you're affected by heat, sometimes you're not, it's neither here nor there, then um, what you can do is slow down your exercises. So you're gonna take a longer time to do them and maybe do fewer repetitions as well and mm -hmm. easier exercises. If it's a hot day, even yes. if you are inside in air conditioning, right. um, mm -hmm. you can still have heat intolerance symptoms because the barometric pressure is high and that can affect you still. So mm -hmm. slow down, fewer repetitions, maybe an easier exercise, one that doesn't cause so much strain. Right. Uh, I can see some of the questions already coming up, so just read, read what they are saying. So I have a mm -hmm. question from Resing and he has written, Doctor, is there any size or any other way to stop MS hug? Which is, of course, <laughs> one of the most difficult symptoms of MS, we understand. Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. I've not heard of a way to stop it, like to prevent it from coming mm -hmm. on. Yeah. The, the best thing that I have educated my patients on is stretches. And there's no right or wrong stretch. It's to stretch the area that you're feeling it. So for some people, the MS hug is pretty high. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, and then other people, it's, it's still the torso area, but it's a little bit lower. So just mm -hmm. finding a stretch, whether it's like leaning, tipping, I'm going fast. Like you, you yeah. can hold these stretches for anywhere from yes. 30 seconds or so, or even three seconds, or twisting, folding okay. forward, standing backwards, like move around in a way, if it's comfortable, if it's not comfortable, then don't do that. But stretching out those muscles, especially as soon as you first feel it coming on, for some people can be very helpful. Okay, so stretching is actually the main exercise for any part of the body for that matter. I think that's right. why people prefer yoga, I believe. Yeah, yeah, because with the MS hug, it's your muscles tightening. And, and sometimes those muscles don't want to tighten. And it's that sensation of tightening too. Um, right. Sometimes your muscles just want to stay put and they don't want to be stretched. And if you try to stretch them, it's just going to feel even worse. But then other times it's tight and, and or feels tight. And so just stretching it out can be very helpful. You know, I can see various comments. Someone has written down as it. Sarah has written that swimming is the best exercise. Dr. Bianca has written that dancing is the best, best exercise for her. And Jelly Lex has written yoga. So I believe for different people, it's different kind of exercises that suits yeah. their body. 
And yeah, if you can, movement is best. So, but that movement can look different for anyone. If that movement is yoga, I love the dancing idea. Um, it could be walking, could just be get up and move or, you know, seated stretches, standing stretches. Typically it requires some level of mobility instead of just sitting there, just waiting for it to go away. Right. Uh, moving on to the next question, there's a question by Saros and he has written, is physical therapy helpful for bowel problems? The bowel problems? Oh, bowel problems. Um, so yes, there are actually, I'm glad you mentioned that, there are actually pelvic floor physiotherapists. So, and they specifically focus on pelvic floor, um, meaning bowel and bladder. Right. So if there's someone near you that, like a physical therapist um, near you that specializes in that, that is their, um, their main goal because okay. they're with bowel and bladder, there's a whole bunch of different reasons that could be happening. And there actually are exercises that you can be doing as okay. well as sometimes um, stress management can help with bowel and yes. bladder. So there, there is a specific PT designed to help with that. So I would encourage anyone um, suffering from those symptoms to reach out. And speaking about stress, uh, Dr. Wattle, can you talk about stress and MS, how it affects MS? Yeah, stress affects MS in the same way as heat intolerance. So if anyone comes to me on one day and they say, um, you know, oh my gosh, my symptoms are so bad today, or today's a bad walking day, I have no idea why, or my foot drop is worse, whatever it is. My first question is always, is there a possibility you're overheating? Um, even if it's winter time, do you have, are you bundled up a lot? If we decide, no, this isn't overheating, then my next question is, are you stressed? Is there something going on that maybe you don't feel stressed, but you, something that you could be stressed about? Because I don't know about other people, but for me, I, I very rarely feel stressed, but it manifests physically. And that happens a lot. So you, your symptoms can be getting worse because your body is going through a stress response. So yeah. any, and the great thing though, as odd as this sounds to say, the great thing about heat intolerance and stress if those are, if one of those two things is what's causing your symptoms to be worse, then they're so easily managed. If it's heat intolerance, cool your core temperature down. If it's stress, try to try a bunch of different stress management strategies. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's um, being in a pool. Maybe it's taking a nap. Maybe it's coloring in a coloring book. There's so many different things. Um, but if you can lower your stress, the symptoms will lessen. Whatever is a stress management therapy they can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, I have a question. Uh, so before uh, I, we went live, I was already having a lot of questions you know, coming up from different people. So I have a question I'm going to read out to you. Um, she has written that I have preformis and can I exercise? And how much can I exercise? And uh, how often is there anything to do ease the ache in my perineum? So the first question is the piriformis. Yes. That, yeah. So the piriformis is a muscle that's in our like glute area and it gets tight in a lot of people and it's called piriformis syndrome. And this is can because cause... of um, over exercising. It can be, it can be, it's, there's so many different things that can cause it. It can be over exercising. It could just be that you're sitting on your, your glute muscles, um, maybe for a prolonged period of time. So that nerve gets irritated or those muscles are tight for whatever reason. So when they're tight, it pinches the nerve, the piriformis nerve or okay. the piriformis muscle pinches the sciatic nerve and that can cause numbness, tingling, burning, pins and needles, and it can extend anywhere from the hip area all the way down to the leg. So there are exercises that you can do for that. Sometimes it does require going to a physical therapist in person because you, to get some massage strategies, okay. um, but there are stretches that you can do and exercise, strengthening exercises to help that lessen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So meeting a physiotherapist in person is something which is required at this stage? Um, most of the time, because they can really figure out what, what's causing it. Because if it, 
it depends what the cause is, that's gonna change the treatment plan. But there are, one of my favorite stretches for that area is a figure four stretch. So even as you're just sitting now, if you can grab one of your legs and put it over your knee, okay, and you're sitting kind of like a figure four, that's gonna stretch that area. So if it's just some mild piriformis sensitivity, then doing that stretch um, should be very helpful. All right, okay, thank you, doctor. Yeah. Um, um, I can see lots of questions coming up, so I'll just quickly deal with one of the one of, one of one. So, sunshine, MS, belly, has shown, is there any kind of exercises to improve balance? Yes, balance is one <laughs> of my favorite things to work on. <laughs> and Where, the most common in MS. Yes, yeah, and so let me first start off by saying it depends. Um, so for anyone who says like, yeah, my balance is bad. My first question is, is always, well, when do you notice it? Is it just when you're standing? Is it when you're standing and reaching for something? Is it when you're walking? Because there are many different types of balance. And in order for you to actually get better with balance, you have to be practicing the right exercises. So if it's walking, when you're walking, everyone, let's assume you're not using an assistive device, okay. we need to balance on one leg for 40% yes. of our walking. Because when the other leg is lifting up and coming through, we're standing on one leg. So if anyone has difficulty balancing in single leg stands, then mm -hmm. walking is going to be hard. We also need to balance in a staggered stance, whereas one leg's back, one leg's forward. So if that's mm -hmm. challenging, that can affect your walking. And then there's a different type of balance where you're staying in one position, but you're reaching maybe for something in your closet or you're reaching for a cup on a top shelf. So standing and reaching outside your base of support is a different type of balance. So that would be a different exercise that you can do. So there is a lot that you can do to help with balance, but it just depends on where and maybe it's all of those in which case do all of those exercises but there's a lot of different positions um, that you can use to work on balance so depending on your state what kind of exercises you require right okay. yeah okay. Do, yeah um so the next question from laurie.beville is written can we build our endurance level meaning i can i truly work work up to five thousand to ten thousand steps that's another great question. It requires a lot of monitoring. I think it's absolutely, I, I work with a lot of my clients to improve endurance. So it's absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. But what we can't control is how your body is going to respond to it. But typically what I have found is slowly and incrementally increasing the amount of whatever it is you're trying to have improved endurance with. Yes. Um, over time and it's so slow like for someone without ms within maybe a month period you can go from walking um one mile to four miles but with ms it that might take months like many many months because if you go too quickly you could have a heat intolerance symptom from exercise because your core temperature is rising from the exercise so that could happen or maybe your muscles are getting tighter so your sensation is getting worse so there's there's just so many things if you go too quickly so it takes a while but i have had many of my clients improve endurance you might not get to your full end goal but you should be able to get closer i think you froze oh there you are i'm fine i can hear you can you hear me now? Yes, yes, of course I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you might be able to, you might not get to your full end goal, but you should be able to get a lot closer. You should be able to improve endurance. Again, if you're doing the right exercises. Doctor, speaking about endurance, I also want to know about strengthening exercise, strength building exercises. How important are they and how do you know that you're actually getting on the right track? For example, you know, I have to say about myself, you know, um, I'm trying to build a little strength on my shoulders. They're like really weak. And I try to do different types of push-ups, the front push-up, the back push-up and all. But, you know, I do. And after some time or maybe the next day, I have lots of pain, especially on my right side. And right side is the one which was affected by MSE initially. 
So mm -hmm. always it's the right side, <laughs> which is giving me a lot of problem. So yeah, and I'm trying to get that strength, but in some way, MS just stops me. So right. that's one thing. And yeah, what that gets difficult hoping, for me. <laughs> right. What are you hoping um, will improve because of that strength? Like, is there a specific activity that's hard for you to do? Uh, no. Uh, so for example, I do yoga regularly. But mm -hmm. I know that, you know, my shoulders are weak. I know that. I cannot um, do push-ups or if I have to, you know, lift up my own body during that exercise, I cannot do it. Yeah. You know, I want to do, go to that level as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just want to, you know, improve my own strength. Yes. So there are, in my opinion, there's two different types of strengthening exercise. So one is the type that you're talking about where you just want to get stronger overall. There, it's not limiting you in a specific way, but you just mm -hmm. know that you want more strength. And in that case, it's all about finding the right exercise for the muscle groups, in your case, shoulders, but also finding the right intensity. Push-ups on the floor are very intense. That is a that requires a lot of strength. Even if you're on your knees, that requires a lot of strength. So maybe doing push-ups on a table or like even on a wall, so you're more upright and starting at a more modified level, until you feel like okay, I can do a bunch of these, and then maybe you go to a coffee table. So it's a little bit lower, but not as low as the ground, and you work your way down towards the ground, or even though push-ups is a great exercise, maybe your body responds more to weights instead of body weight. So it could be holding on to a two pound weight, doesn't even need to be anything. Punching up yeah. also works your shoulders. So it's all about finding the right intensity and the right exercise. This, this second type of exercise is my favorite, it's functional exercise. Functional okay. exercise is if you were to tell me, I, I asked you in the beginning, what's, is it limiting you from something? If you were to say, yes, it's limiting me from having enough strength to reach overhead to grab a shirt out of my closet, then a functional exercise for you instead of push-ups, even though push-ups do strengthen your shoulders, a better exercise is practicing reaching and down. Okay. You, where you do the exact movement that's hard for you to do. As soon as it's bad quality or you're just really struggling, stop, rest, and then do it again. So that's just a shoulder example, but there are two different types of exercise. Both are good, both are effective, but if you have a specific movement or activity that's hard for you to do, then it, in order to get the most benefit, the exercises have to be functional. Thanks, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next question by Best in the World. He has written, I have foot drop restless leg syndrome and spasticity. I have been having a lot of problems walking, standing, and with balance. I started physical therapy, and the doctor thinks I have a pinched nerve. So a pinched nerve would not explain all of those. I don't okay. think. I haven't seen. Pinched nerve can explain. Um, a pinched nerve will cause numbness, tingling, burning, pins and needles. Um, I personally have not seen a pinched nerve being the main reason for weakness um, or spasticity. So it, it, you might. I'm not saying that there's not a pinched nerve, but I think that maybe with over time as well, if your mm -hmm. muscles are getting a little bit weaker, especially with foot drop, when there's weakness, so if you have foot drop, your knee and hip muscles have to do more work to pick up the slack. So if they're mm -hmm. doing more work, they're getting tighter, which can sometimes squeeze the nerves and cause some sensory issues. And it can other, sometimes cause uh, compensations on each side of your body. So maybe balance can be worse from that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on there that, that I don't personally, I haven't done any evaluation just from the sounds of it. Um, there's multiple things. It wouldn't just be the pinched nerve. Okay. So maybe you should do a second opinion consultation with some other doctor and see what exactly it is. Yeah. Or maybe there are kind yeah, of, some kind of right test for it. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I do during all of my MS evaluations is I do look at tightness to see if there is spasticity present. We look at strength, range of motion, balance, and walking. And whether it's caused from a pinched nerve or something else, you still should be doing balance exercises and walking exercises. Um, and those are very different than exercises for a pinched nerve. All right. Um, I see another question by Resing again, and he is written, I, is there a special kind of shoe that you can recommend for MS patients? Great question. I get this one a lot, and I wish I had a recommendation, but everyone is so different. I Just from the patients that I have seen, which is such a small category compared to everyone who has MS, but just in that small group, there are some people who need very flat shoes, like no sole, like mm -hmm. basically just t on the ground because mm -hmm. otherwise they trip. Whereas other people do better with wedges or something that's a little bit taller. Some people have more narrow feet, other people have wider feet. So unfortunately I don't have an answer. I don't, I personally haven't found that there's one shoe that's best for people with MS. Okay. Um, doctor, the other question which I have is about cognitive issues. So MS people also you know, complain a lot about cognitive problems. And mm -hmm. what can you recommend in such states? So there are cognitive therapists out there, kind of similar to physical therapists, but instead of giving you strengthening exercises for muscles, they give you brain exercises. So mm -hmm. that if, if you're someone who's dealing with um, even just mild cognitive limitations, I would reach out to someone who specializes in that. There are also a bunch of apps and even um, puzzles that you can do. If, if one of the cognitive issues is word finding, there are word mm -hmm. finding puzzles, or there's so many different types of puzzles that have been proven to be effective for cognition. One of my favorite exercises that I work on is for people who cognitively have a difficult time doing two things at once. Um, the, my favorite exercise for that is to do a strengthening exercise. The exercise can be done in a seated position or standing. It doesn't really matter what the exercise is, but at the same time that you're doing that exercise, you are counting down from 100 by threes, or you are saying as many names as you can that start with the letter S. And you're just thinking about something at the same time that you're doing a physical movement and you're training your brain to do two things at once. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, moving on to the other question, um, Nicola Jones has written, do you, ha do you follow up a diagnosis of MS with a lumbar puncture? Um, there's a bunch of, there's a couple of different tests that people do. Yes. It's almost always included, not almost always, always um, also with an MRI of the brain and spinal cord, lumbar pu puncture. Um, there's, there are also a couple of other types of MRIs that some people have access to right now, depending on where they live and other people don't. So it would never just be a lumbar puncture. In my experience and from what I've heard, it would never just be a lumbar puncture. Okay. But lumbar puncture also is done in some cases. It is, yeah. It, and with that said, some people um, just get an MRI and their doctors are like, yep, this is what you have. And they don't. So it used to be that you would get an MRI and a lumbar puncture. They would test your white blood cells. It was yes. all of this. Um, and, and maybe a little bit of that depends on if MS runs in your family or um, if if it's more likely that you're someone who would have MS and your MRI shows lesions, maybe that's all they would do. Whereas if they're unsure, no one else you know has MS, you don't live in an area that has MS, maybe they would be doing more of them. More than oh, I hate that test. It happened with okay. me, so I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, see, the next question is very, very interesting. It is about COVID times. Is there any kind of uh, breathing exercises that one can do to help improve the immunity? To, quick answer, I have not heard of any breathing exercises to help with immunity. Breathing exercises can help with stress management, um, mm -hmm. which can help with a bunch of symptoms that might worsen from stress. But I haven't heard breathing to help with immunity. Okay. Um, but what do you think about COVID times, doctor? 
you know people are yeah. actually you know what kind of complaints are you getting during this period the biggest thing that and this is probably because I'm a physical therapist but the biggest thing that i keep hearing is that their people with ms are nervous that they're going to get weaker because they are home so because maybe they were going out to the gym or to a physical therapist in a pt clinic or for whatever reason things are closing so now they're inside and they're nervous that they're going to get weaker and lose the ground that they have gained from doing whatever it was that they were doing before so and i mean i'm a huge advocate for home exercises I personally work out at home because I I hate going to the gym. That's so much more effort to just get <laughs> out. So there are so many things um, that you can do at home, especially now during COVID nineteen. Just COVID nineteen yeah. doesn't mean that you have to get weaker. Yes, it means you have to stay inside and maybe not go to your other places that you were going to before. But there is so much that you can do in your home without weights, without anything. to yeah. help you continue to get stronger or even starting from square one and get stronger from there. Yeah, absolutely. I love this during covid times. I really don't need to don't need to go out. I can exercise indoors. Yeah, <laughs> it's just much easier. <laughs> right. And even people who were going to physical therapy, you should be doing a home exercise program anyways. It should never just be PT or even gym exercises. it should also be stuff that you do at home. So for some people I think this is a huge wake up call where you, where they had a home exercise program and they're like, "Uh-oh, I haven't been doing it and now this is what I have to do." <laughs> It's all in your determination and yeah. your focus. <laughs> <laughs> I can see on the question by Warrior Spirits and he has written is a vegan diet okay for MS patients? Can okay, you tell a little about diet? Doctor Um this is always a heated subject when I I give a lot of presentations to MS support groups I am not a nutritionist I so I personally don't really have a stance on one specific diet when I give these presentations this question always comes up and someone will stand up and say oh I did the walls protocol and it was amazing everyone needs to do that and then someone else will stand up and say I did the walls it didn't do anything for me I did a vegan diet or you know all of these different types of diets yeah. so something different works for everyone so yeah. they do generally lower sodium diet is best what i always suggest is if you're interested in one try it and try it for a couple of months and if you feel better awesome if you don't maybe try a different one but there's yeah. there's not even if you talk to someone and their world has been changed from a specific diet you your world might be changed from a different one it's not it's very much not one size fits all or, or one diet fits all yeah actually so some people they say that you know legumes give them fatigue the other people mm -hmm. are like fine with it some people really like dairy products the other people uh, they say complete no to it so yeah it depends from person to person yeah. on their body yeah absolutely and can, yeah yeah sorry I was going to say if you if you're following a specific nutrition program um because it was one that your friends didn't have great results if you've been doing it for a couple of months and you're not noticing results I don't feel like you'd have to stay with the same one if it's not working for you so there's there are in research now is showing that some research is showing more keto diets are beneficial um so I think that nutrition is being looked at a lot more so hopefully in the next one to four years we'll have more information on uh what might be a better guidelines but even then it's different for everyone yeah it is and when we actually go to any kind of nutritionist you know the main quick things that we get is there's a long list of not to eat things yeah. and a very short list of what to eat yeah so you have to you know sort of uh, with by yourself that what you want to eat yes yeah absolutely <laughs> Okay, moving on to the next question. Shelly Goldstein has written, I recently read that hyperbaric chamber could be helpful for MS. What's your opinion? I'm not sure of what that is. Um, I have heard of it, but I don't know enough about it or know many people who have used that. Um, okay. so I don't have any thoughts on that, sorry. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, someone has written how do you take turmeric will you be able to tell about this doctor um 
that kind of goes along with the nutrition question. Go for it. Yes. See, turmeric is um, known for anti-inflammatory benefits. I have heard that in order to reap those benefits, it should be had with crushed pepper. Otherwise, it's not fully released in your system. Um, but I would my guidelines for is just you know if it works, go for it. If it doesn't, try something else. Exactly. Um, yeah. Definitely, other question which I have is about numbness, which is another most common symptom of MS. Mm -hmm. So when someone has um, uh, numbness, you know, we or sometimes they even have heaviness, supposing in their hands. Do you want them to recommend them to still use the hands and do something, or sometimes it's a complete no-no and just give rest to the hands or legs or wherever they have numbness? Mm -hmm. What do you think about num numbness and heaviness kind of problems with MS? Right. So numbness is, a, is definitely a tricky one. If it's something that comes and goes and it's not always there, but when you do have it, it's painful to move and that makes it worse, then I would say when you have that numbness, just rest it out. Don't, don't do much of anything. Okay. If you're someone who that numbness is always there, absolutely still use that arm or hand, whatever it is, as much as you can. Not so much that it's causing pain and yeah. causing other things to happen, but if you don't use your arm, your arm will get weak so quickly or your hand, whatever it is. So I would suggest using it. There are sensitivity exercises. They're called desensitization. Okay. And basically you can get something that's hanging around. If it's your hand, you know, just kind of rub it. If it's not sensitive, find okay. something else that you have around, you know, you just find different things. And okay. if you're like, ooh, yeah, that brings the numbness on or that brings it on, keep going lightly. And the idea is that you're desensitizing your, your skin, your brain, so that this will no, oops, this will no <laughs> longer be a sensitive thing and your sensation will improve a bit. And then you try something else and you go around your home finding various um, hot and cold, sharp and dull, different yes. types of sensations. Um, Doctor, does massage help in numbness and getting sensations back? It can if the numbness and sens numbness and sensory issues are caused from muscle tightness, at least partially caused from that. Then absolutely, a massage loosening up the muscles means there's going to be less pressure on those nerves and therefore less numbness, tingling, heaviness. If the sensation is pretty much caused just from the MS and it's in the spinal cord that where it's coming from, then massage probably won't do a whole lot, at least not a lasting effect. Okay. But at the same time, if it feels good, go for it. Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing I want to know is that nowadays people are doing a lot of acupuncture and they say that, you know, acupuncture really helps us, you know. So can you tell a little about what is acupuncture and in what conditions can you actually go for it? Yeah, acupuncture is when um, the practitioner has tiny, tiny, very thin needles. I have personally not had it before, but it's the very thin needles and they put them in your skin, in your body, sometimes your face, um, yeah. your, your head, anywhere, your ears, and they're putting it in specific spots where the energy flow is. And the idea with acupuncture typically is to release um, places where your energy might be blocked and that can help release tension and pressure. So I've had people with MS that I work with get acupuncture and they feel amazing after. They always would schedule their PT sessions after acupuncture because they felt so good and like they could do more. And I've had other clients who went to get acupuncture and it just didn't, didn't really do much for them. There is something called a, um, um, I'm forgetting the name, acupuncture, dry needling. Dry needling okay. is a technique. It's very, very similar. It's something that physical therapists do instead of acupuncturists. Same small needles. From what I gather, the main difference is that dry needling is done more based on where the muscles are versus where the energy flow is. So if you have tightness in your forearm, they'd put one right here, wherever the, the, you know, the specific spot would be for that muscle. Okay, so yes, because now these people are actually going a lot for acupuncture with, for different kinds of pains or even if they have spasticity. I have personally never tried it, but yeah. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I I so what, I've had people say that they move better at their walking is better after. And then I have other people who didn't really affect them physically, but their pain was a lot better or they just felt more relaxed. So that's one of those other things where if you haven't tried it, go for it. If it feels <laughs> good and it helps, great. If not, try things. <laughs> so for me, it's a dilemma in my mind. You know, I have to think, oh my God, needles, no. <laughs> right, yes, right. If it's something that freaks you out for whatever reason, it's probably not going to work. Same as physical therapy. Physical therapy in research time and time again is shown to be effective and to help. But if someone comes in with the attitude and mental belief that, I, I've done this before and it didn't work. This isn't going to work for me. They probably won't get better because they're not going to be consistent with the exercises and you're actually blocking that from happening. So it's the same with acupuncture or any type of therapy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see one question from Shelly and she's asking, do you know any kind of patients who has MS and also has got COVID, by the way, and if their, go their MS has got worse because of COVID? Is there any kind of patient that you have that please? Um, I personally, luckily, don't have any clients that had that with MS that got COVID. Should knock on wood. Uh, but I have been keeping up on some other doctors that do have patients with MS okay. who have COVID. And from what I've been hearing, they're doing fine. It, it, their MS has not been getting worse because of it. There have been some cases of like pseudo flares. Uh, yeah. where be, just because you're sick, COVID or not, anytime you, you have an illness, yes. your core temperature can rise. So you can get yes. heat intolerance and a symptom worse. And so it's nothing out of the norm from any other type of um, illness, UTI, infection, things like that, from what I've been hearing. Okay, that is mm -hmm. something good that we heard. <laughs> uh, Dr. I also want to know about uh, back aches. So I can also see lots of com people complaining about back aches. Maybe they're at home. Maybe they are just lying down or seat sitting in an awkward position or just standing for a long time in the kitchen. But back ache ha is becoming a main issue. What do you have to say about that? So I have been super aware of that for a while, which is why back in March, right before COVID happened, um, I created an online program called the Total Core Program because back pain is almost always associated with core weakness. And 80% of people in life will go through some bout of, of low back pain. So it is very common. However, people with MS who typically have more weakness in their core area will suffer from back pain more so it's, and when you have a weak core, you can have back pain, mobility is harder, just moving around, walking around, posture is worse. So there are a lot of different core exercises, ab, core, just so you guys know, the core that a lot of people talk about means the front, like where your abs are, the back and the sides and your glutes, like your hip area, there's a lot that goes into your core. So if any of those areas are weak, low back pain can increase or, or it can start from that. And maybe that weakness is from sitting around more than usual or a position that you were sitting in or standing in for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but is this also related to MS somehow? Or it's just your lifestyle? Um, it could be related to MS if some of your MS weakness is in the core. Mm -hmm. And by MS weakness, MS weakness isn't just that you stopped using those muscles. It's that the nerves that go there, those, that the myelin on those nerves are, is being degenerated, broken down, so that this, it's harder to get stronger there because of the, ner the innervation to those muscles. So if that's the reason, well, and there's no way for us to know, like there's no, unfortunately, there's not a test that we can do to say, yep, your core weakness is caused from MS, not your lifestyle or not that you sat too long yesterday. Um, so I treat it the same, whether it's caused by MS or not, I, it's the same core exercises. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see another question by Ramadas, and she has written, is it possible that a physical therapist does the therapy and make your symptoms worse than before? Can all the physical therapists deal with MS? Can you repeat that question? Is it possible that a physical therapist does the therapy and makes your symptoms oh, okay. worse than before? 
can all the PTs deal with MS? I see. Um, I missed the beginning, so it didn't make sense, but I got it now. I uh, absolutely that all physical therapists are not created equal. I love all of us. I think we do great things, but there's a huge difference in MS physical therapy versus what I would call regular, which is orthopedic physical therapy. And the reason that I know this is because I wasn't always an MS specialist. I used to be just a regular and anyone who graduates from PT school can do any type of therapy. Um, what I went into was outpatient orthopedic, people who had back pain, surgeries, neck pain, shoulder, leg, whatever. And it's treated so differently than someone with MS. So then I went through the whole MS training to become an MS specialist. And I have so many clients who come see me and they say, I don't think this is going to work. I've done PT before and it didn't work, but I'm here because my doctor told me to come. And I, all, I totally understand why they would say that because if you're doing the wrong exercises or even if you're doing the right exercises, but in the wrong way, then you're not going to get better. And if they choose the wrong exercises, if they choose more orthopedic exercises, then yeah, maybe your symptoms do get a little bit worse because you're pushing too hard or it's just the wrong muscle group to be focusing on. Also, oh, yeah. there's so much to do. exercises aside during my PT sessions, I'm constantly asking, are you fatiguing? Are you feeling okay? Or are you, or, you know, do you want to take a break or keep going? And I feel like a lot of orthopedic PTs forget to check in like that. And if they don't check in, the person with MS often doesn't want to say, I'm tired. Can we take a break? So they keep pushing through and that can make things worse. So there's other factors beyond the exercises that go into it. Okay, uh, this question is on the screen. She's written, is it uh, possible that someone with MS will need MSPT indefinitely? So that's a great question. Um, I personally feel like yes, but that PT can, be, can go in your home too. Like it's very rare that you would need MSPT indefinitely, like going to a clinic. You should, if you have a good PT, they should be giving you things to do at home so that you don't need to go into PT because all insurance companies typically have a cutoff point. I don't know any insurance company that have indefinite PT coverage. So the idea would be go to PT, learn a bunch of things for whatever you're currently dealing with, continue them at home, take a break from PT. Yeah. If you get a different symptom or you just want to talk about other things, come back and do that. But you should... Be, if you don't use it, you lose it. So I think you should be doing a lot of these PT specific exercises indefinitely. I think it's more about being active all the time. You have to yeah. be active. You just yeah. cannot leave the exercises at all. Right, right. And, you know, while speaking to you, you know, one uh, personal question came in my mind, which I want to ask you oh. that, yes, like you said that you have specializes in MS and lots of techniques are different in MS and uh, normal PT. You know, what made you choose MS as a specialty in PT? I don't know how to ask you this. Yeah, so when I was in PT school, the subject that I found the most challenging but most interesting was the neurology classes. And we did learn about MS, but it was just, I'm pretty sure it was one day, like one class, that was it. Um, but then, I graduated, I started my first job as a physical therapist, and within my first year, our CEO, who had multiple um, different clinics in different states, said, we have an MSPT program in Rhode Island, I want to start one here in the Boston, Massachusetts area, who's interested? And I knew very little about it, but I was like, this is neuro, I loved neuro, this is a population that's underserved, I'll go for it. So I raised my hand <laughs> and then I started doing all of the training and I fell in love with it immediately because my favorite thing about being a PT is brainstorming. And with, when you're working with people who have MS, even just one person, you need to brainstorm. Each day is going to be different. One day you might come in with a lot of energy and strength. Another day you might come in with a lot of weakness. Or maybe there are other things like we just focus on kind of things like conversations like we're talking about now instead of exercise. So there's constant brainstorming um, based on how the person is feeling coming in. So I loved it.
Oh, thank you. You know, I have to say thank you to you. And I'm sure all of us are saying thank you to you because, you know, uh, when we look at you and your profile and the kind of videos you make, you are full of energy and that we can see that passion in you while making those videos. I'm so <laughs> That's why we love talking to you. And I you know it's Dr. Gretchen. Right. <laughs> we have to be with her. <laughs> Well, I started my Instagram page just because I had so, I was starting to realize more and more how there's very few MS physical therapists, even in the Boston area, which Boston is, you know, pretty up and coming. There's lots of hospitals there, even in that area. I mean, I don't live there anymore, but the last time that I lived there, I, there were only four of us in the state of Massachusetts. It was me, um, some other guy and then these two people were people that worked for the company that i worked for and i made them get it because they were also going to be treating people with ms so it's just unfortunately not very common so that's why i started all of this online stuff because i wanted to help more people thank you doctor uh doctor i can see you know we have only uh seven minutes left before this session would end and we have been talking for more than 45 minutes we didn't even realize <laughs> It's always such a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, I agree. Time just flies away. <laughs> so uh, before we, you know, um, hang up, I think I'll take the last question from Saru Tuve, and then we can wind up. Uh, so she has written, is intensity interval training good or bad for MS patient? Great question. There's a lot of research being done on this recently. And they're saying, so um, the phrasing is high intensity interval training, also known as HIIT, H-I-I-T. And there's a lot of research out now showing that high intensity interval training is good for people with MS. And the cool thing about this is a lot of people are like, high intensity, no way. Like I can't walk or I have difficulty doing X, Y, Z. How am I supposed to do high intensity? But high intensity can be done sitting in a chair. And, and it's really just these interval trainings. High intensity might be your push-ups followed by a rest break or maybe followed by air bicep curls and, and then push-ups again. So there's so many different ways. I truly believe anyone with MS, regardless of your mobility level or weakness level, can do interval training. And it is showing that it can be effective. Some people do power lifting. Um, and the powerlifting has been shown to be effective. And the reason that is, is because it's interval training. So something to look into. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. um, it's five minutes are left and uh, we really want to know about your program also, doctor, what program you're offering, if you can just, you know, take us through that too. Yeah, so the reason I do have an online program and the, the reason I started it beyond my Instagram page was because I had a lot of clients, even in my local area, who constantly would miss appointments. They would either cancel or no show. And the reason was because it, maybe it was raining outside and it wasn't safe for them to come in, or they were just having a bad fatigue day. There were so many valid reasons that they couldn't come in, but then because of that, they weren't getting stronger as, quick, as quickly as what I thought they should. So then I developed an online wellness program that has essentially all of the same exercises, all of the same MS symptom management strategies that we would review in person, but it's recorded and in, in this program. So I created that. We also have guest speakers, which is super exciting. I'll bring in MS neurologists and other MS specialists. Oh, so okay. that's a really, that's my, the favorite pro, my favorite program I offer. And it has that accountability layer to it to really help people actually do their exercises and stay consistent. Because as we all know, MS or not, if we're not consistent, then it doesn't mean anything. You could, have, you could have all the same knowledge I do, but your symptoms will stay the same if you don't apply it. So, so we have that. Um, if you're in certain states in the US, I do have telehealth physical therapy. I have a total core program for core strengthening. And all of that is on my website too. Oh, great. You know, I can already see some people are saying I'm going to join it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's called the Missing MSING. Claire um, posted the website. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Lex, thank you. Okay, great. doctor, thank you so much for your time on Sunday. I know it's your day and you still take out, took out time for this. And we are really thankful to you for this. And um, as I said, it's always a pleasure meeting you again. And I think we should do it sometime again soon. Absolutely. We, let's not let another year go by. No, no, of course not. 
<laughs> would love to do it again soon very soon <laughs> absolutely i'm here for it yes thank you doctor and all our best wishes to you for your program and i know last time when we spoke you said you are working on it and today it has gone to that level Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> I think yeah, cuz it's been up and running for about a, a little over a year now. So it must have just started. So yeah, it's it's been <laughs> a fun ride for sure. Okay, thank you doctor. Thank you so much for joining us and everybody who is watching us. Thank you. And people are giving you sending you hearts already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thank best you doctor ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank doctor, you for thank having you so me. much. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay guys thank you so much it was lovely 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 talking to Dr Gretchen and it was so lovely seeing you all here with us we'll come meet again next week for more sessions like this and if you have to connect to Dr Gretchen you can directly contact her and also ms relax has from the website address for her and you can enroll in the program well seeing you again thank you so much have a good day bye bye